Abandoned and left for dead by her own alien kind, blood pooled around her broken body, but a human soldier stopped to help her, knowing he would pay the ultimate price for his mercy. The insectoid Taktak and reptilian Saurians had turned the once lush planet of Zephyrus into a scorched wasteland over decades of brutal war. Crashed human starships littered the battle-scarred landscape. Sergeant Patrick Henderson trudged through the toxic smog, scanning for salvage, cut off from all human contact. Tak-tak artillery shells whistled overhead, streaking towards distant Saurian lines. He froze as he spotted a crumpled heap on the blood-soaked ground. A wounded Tak-tak child. Her four spindly legs were twisted at sickening angles. Green blood oozed from her thorax. Her compound eyes stared at nothing. He raised his rifle, squeezed the trigger, then lowered it. He sighed. He couldn't execute a helpless kid, even a Tak-Tak. The Tak-Tak had butchered millions of humans, slaughtering civilian colonists and eating captives alive. Helping this child was treason. His own people would shoot him for it. The Tak-Tak would skewer him if they found him with her. But he had to get her to safety. He was a dead man walking now. He cradled her limp body, her blood staining his uniform and began the long march through hostile territory. Merciless enemies surrounded them, closing in. There was no way they would both survive. But he had to try. Patrick's boots pounded on the cracked earth, each step jolting LaRosse's battered body. Her green blood still seeped, leaving a sickly trail. Blistering sun beat down on Patrick's back. His arms burned from the effort of carrying her. Suddenly, plasma bolts sizzled past his head. Saurian war cries filled the air. Four massive reptilian forms charged forward, green scales glinting, eyes wild with bloodlust. Patrick dove behind a boulder, shielding Laros with his body. He unslung his rifle, peeking out to squeeze off shots. Two Saurians dropped, smoking holes in their chests. The remaining soldiers zeroed in on Patrick's position. He popped up to fire again. Pain exploded in his thigh as a plasma bolt found its mark. Patrick crumpled, nearly dropping Laros. Gritting his teeth, he forced himself up, limping onward as bolts scorched the ground around them. There, a small cave entrance nearly hidden in the cliffs ahead. Patrick dragged himself and Laros inside, collapsing against the cool stone wall. He checked his wound, grimacing at the charred, oozing flesh. Outside, heavy footsteps crunched closer. The Saurians shouted to each other in their guttural tongue. Patrick frowned. They seemed to be calling Laros's name. Why were they hunting her specifically? Laros, Patrick whispered. Those lizards really want to find you. Any idea why? Laros's antennae drooped. She chittered softly. I, I can make people do things. With my mind. The Masters wanted me to control others to hurt them. Patrick's eyes widened. Mind control, if Laros could influence the Tuk Tuk and Saurians, he squeezed her small shoulder. I'll keep you safe, Laros, I promise. And maybe if you learn to control your power, we can stop this war, save both our peoples. Laros blinked up at him, mandibles twitching. You would help me even though I'm Tuk Tuk. I'm helping you because you need me. Doesn't matter what you are. Patrick smiled. Guess we're both outcasts now, huh? Laros made a trilling sound, and Patrick realized she was laughing. He chuckled too. The human soldier and Tak-Tak child, unlikely friends, huddled together as the search parties closed in. Patrick's grip on his rifle tightened as they approached the hidden entrance to the resistance camp. Laros cradled protectively against his chest. Suddenly, a dozen Tak-Tak fighters burst from the shadows, Plasma rifles leveled at Patrick's head. He froze, slowly raising one hand. I'm not here to fight. The kid needs help, he called out. Impossible, the scarred Tak Tak breathed. Princess Laros lives. Patrick blinked. Princess Laros was royalty. The guards ushered them inside, leading them through winding tunnels to a central chamber. Dozens of Tak Tak rebels milled about cleaning weapons and tending to wounded comrades. A grizzled Tak-Tak with a missing antenna limped forward, his carapace pitted with battle scars. 
I am Zixus, leader of this cell. Explain yourselves. Patrick gently set Laros down, keeping a protective hand on her shoulder. I found her wounded on the battlefield. She said she has abilities. I think she can help end this war. Zixus clicked his mandibles thoughtfully. The princess's mind control is a powerful weapon. With her at our side, we could turn the tide against the Saurians. He turned to Laros, bowing his head. Your Highness, we thought you lost after the assassination attempt. Your survival brings hope to our people. Zixus considered Patrick, compound eyes unreadable. You protected our princess, human. For that, we owe you a debt. We will heal her wounds and help you find passage back to your world. In return, we would have you fight alongside us. I'll do it. I'll fight with you. Help Laros learn to control her power. But I need your word you'll get me back to Earth. Zixus nodded. You have my oath, soldier. Welcome to the Resistance. As Tuk Tuk medics carried Laros away, Patrick turned to Zixus. What did you mean about an assassination attempt? Who tried to kill Laros? Zixus's antennae drooped. The Saurians, we thought, but there were rumors of traitors within the royal family itself, whispers of a plot to seize power. Patrick frowned. Had someone close to Laros betrayed her? And how deep did that treachery run? Patrick crouched in the shadows of the resistance base, Laros at his side. Zixus had tasked them with decrypting intercepted Saurian transmissions, hoping to gain intel on enemy movements. Patrick's fingers flew over the console, lines of code flickering across the screen. Suddenly a message caught his eye. It was heavily encrypted, but the sender's ID stood out, a high-ranking Saurian general. The recipient's ID was scrambled, but traced back to the heart of the Tak Tak leadership. Laros, look at this, he hissed. It's a plot to assassinate the remaining Tak Tak royals. They want to seize control of Zephyrus's resources. They rushed to the command center, datapad in hand. Zixus studied the message, mandibles clicking rapidly. This is dire news, but it confirms my suspicions. We have a traitor in our midst, someone close to the royal family feeding information to the Saurians. Patrick stepped forward. Let me go undercover, infiltrate the Saurian ranks. My human appearance will help me blend in as a prisoner of war. Zixus hesitated. It's a dangerous gambit. If they discover you, they'll kill you. Laros placed a clawed hand on Patrick's arm. I can use my abilities to help maintain his cover, influence his interrogators. Zixus nodded slowly. Very well. We'll arrange for your capture near a Saurian patrol. Laros, you'll monitor him from here, providing telepathic support. Patrick and Laros shared a look, a silent promise to watch each other's backs. Days later, Patrick found himself shackled in a dank Saurian cell nursing mock injuries. Saurian guards dragged him before a towering warlord, eyes glinting with malice. The interrogation was brutal, but Patrick weathered it, Laris's gentle presence in his mind bolstering his resolve. In time he wormed his way into the warlord's trust, becoming a valued informant on human military strategies. As he delved deeper into Saurian High Command, Patrick uncovered a web of corruption far beyond what they'd suspected. The conspiracy traced back to a shadowy intergalactic corporation one that had been fueling the war for decades, growing fat off the bloodshed. Patrick gathered what evidence he could, transmitting it back to the Resistance in secret bursts. But he knew his time was running out. Suspicious eyes watched his every move, and one misstep would mean a plasma bolt to the head. He had to get back to Laros to share what he'd learned and plan their next move. The corporation had to be exposed, their machinations brought to light, if Patrick failed, if his cover was blown. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance, and Patrick was the linchpin. He squared his shoulders, preparing to make his final play. For Laros, for Zephyrus, for peace. Patrick's finger trembled as he tapped out the coded transmission. He glanced over his shoulder. The Saurian command center buzzed with activity, but no one paid him any mind. 
they thought he was just another broken human slave. Evac camp. Attack imminent. Trust Laros. He hit send, praying Laros would receive the message in time, praying she could convince Zixus to listen. The Saurians were already marshalling their forces, preparing to crush the resistance once and for all. Miles away, Laros jerked upright as Patrick's warning flashed through her mind. She burst into Zixus's chamber. The Saurians are coming. Patrick sent word. We have to evacuate now. Zixus clicked his mandibles in alarm. He trusted Laros's abilities, and Patrick had proven himself a true ally. Sound the alarm. We leave nothing for the lizards. As the Tuk Tuk resistance scrambled to evacuate, Laros closed her eyes, reaching out with her mind. She couldn't communicate directly with Patrick, not at this distance, but she could sense his presence, faint and flickering among the Saurian horde. Hold on, Patrick. We'll be ready for them. The Saurians marched on the resistance camp, plasma cannons primed, eyes glinting with cruel anticipation. But as they crested the ridge, they found only empty tents flapping in the breeze. Confusion rippled through the ranks. Suddenly the ground erupted beneath their feet. Tak Tak fighters burst from concealed tunnels, plasma rifles blazing. Laros stood at the center of the maelstrom, her mind reaching out to sow chaos and fear among the Saurians. Patrick seized his chance. He slipped away in the confusion, snatching up a fallen plasma rifle. He charged into the fray, fighting his way towards Laros and Zixus. Patrick nodded grimly. And you're being used. Your soldiers, the Tak Tak, all of us. Pawns in a game we don't even see. The general's eyes narrowed. What are you talking about? The corporation? They've been playing both sides, fueling the war for profit. Laros stepped forward, her voice ringing with authority. I've seen it in your minds, the weapons, the technology, all supplied by the same company. The general lowered his cannon, confusion and anger warring on his face. You're saying oh, my people have died dirt for corporate greed? Patrick met his gaze. Help us stop it, expose their crimes, end this war. The general clasped it, sealing their pact as the battle raged around them. Tak Tak and human Saurian and rebel united against a common foe at last. As the last Saurian holdouts fell, Leros turned to Patrick, her compound eyes shining. We did it, we won. Patrick smiled, though his face was tight with pain and exhaustion. We won this battle, but the war isn't over yet, not until we bring the truth to light. Zixus limped over his carapace scorched but eyes bright with fierce pride. The Saurian is secured. His evidence is already being transmitted to every corner of the galaxy. Patrick let out a shaky breath. They'd struck a blow against the corporation, but he knew this was just the beginning. They'd paint targets on their backs. The company would stop at nothing to bury the truth. But looking at Laros, at the determined faces of the Tak Tak rebels, he felt a flicker of hope. They'd forged an alliance here, a bond that transcended species and borders. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them, together. Patrick and Laros strode through the sleek corridors of the Intergalactic Corporation's headquarters, their stolen employee uniforms blending seamlessly with the bustling crowd. Patrick's heart raced as he scanned the unfamiliar faces, his hand hovering near the concealed plasma pistol at his hip. Beside him, Laros's compound eyes darted nervously, her mind reaching out to detect any hint of suspicion or alarm. They reached a secure door marked Data Core. Patrick swiped the stolen access card, holding his breath as the light blinked red, then green. The door hissed open, revealing a cavernous room filled with towering servers and flickering holographic displays. Patrick and Laros exchanged a determined look then set to work, downloading terabytes of incriminating files onto a hidden data drive. Suddenly the door slammed open. A squad of heavily armed mercenaries burst in, rifles leveled at Patrick and Laros. Patrick's blood ran cold as he recognized the leader's scarred face. Sergeant Juan Hernandez, Patrick's old squadmate, stared back at him, eyes hard. Henderson, I thought you were dead. Patrick slowly raised his hands, I could say the same about you. What are you doing here working for these corporate scumbags? 
Patrick took a step forward, ignoring the rifles trained on his chest. Juan, listen to me. This company, they've been playing both sides, selling weapons to the Tak Tak, the Saurians, even terrorist cells back on Earth. They're war profiteers, and we have the evidence to prove it. Hernandez hesitated, his grip on his rifle wavering. What are you saying? Patrick gestured to Laros. This is Princess Laros of the Tak Tak. We've been fighting together, trying to end this war, but the real enemy is Zephyr Corp. The mercenaries shifted uneasily, glancing at each other. One of them, a woman with a cybernetic eye, lowered her weapon. He's telling the truth, Sarge. I've seen some of the shipment manifests. This company is dirty as hell. Patrick clasped Hernandez's hand. Come with us, one. Help us expose these bastards. Hernandez shook his head. Someone has to hold the line, buy you time. With a final nod, Patrick and Laros raced from the room, alarms blaring in their wake. They fought their way through the corridors, Hernandez and his team providing cover fire as they battled the corporation's security forces. They burst into the executive suite, ready to confront the CEO and end this once and for all. But as the doors opened, Patrick froze, his blood turning to ice in his veins. There, seated behind the massive desk, was a face he never thought he'd see again, a face that had haunted his dreams for years. "'Dad?' Patrick whispered. Richard Henderson, presumed dead for over a decade, stared back at his son, a cold smile on his lips. "'Hello, Patrick. I've been expecting you.' Patrick's world spun. His father, the man who had taught him about duty, about honour, was the mastermind behind this web of greed and bloodshed. Laurus placed a steadying hand on Patrick's shoulder, her thoughts brushing against his. Together. We'll face this together. Patrick drew in a shuddering breath, squaring his shoulders as he faced the man he had once idolised, the man he now had to stop, no matter the cost. Explosions rocked the building as Hernandez and his team fought to the last man, buying precious seconds for Patrick to act, for the fate of Zephyrus, for the future of the Tak Tak, and for the soul of humanity itself, Patrick raised his plasma pistol, aiming it squarely at his father's heart. Patrick's pulse pounded in his ears, the plasma pistol shaking in his grip. Dad, how could you? All this death, all this suffering? For what? James Henderson sighed, his eyes filled with a weariness that seemed to age him decades. I never meant for it to go this far, son. When I first got involved with Zephyr Corp., I thought I could use their resources to broker peace between the Tak Tak and Saurians. He ran a hand through his greying hair, but the money, the power, it corrupted me, corrupted all of us. By the time I realized what was happening, it was too late. The war had become too profitable to stop. James met his son's gaze unflinching. I did it to protect you, your mother, your sister. If my enemies knew I had a family... Laros stepped forward her compound eyes glinting. Mr. Henderson, if what you say is true, if you truly regret your actions, then help us. Testify against the corporation. Provide evidence of their crimes. James was silent for a long moment. Then slowly he nodded. You're right. It's time to face the consequences of my choices. I'll give you everything I have. Financial records, communication logs, weapons manifests, enough to bring Zephyr Corp to its knees. Suddenly the building shook with the force of an explosion. Alarms blared as the heavy doors burst open, revealing a squad of heavily armed mercenaries. At their head was a towering alien with a cruel, angular face, Zorn, Zephyr Corp's chief enforcer. Well, well, Zorn sneered, his voice like gravel. The prodigal son returns, and he brought the Tak Tak princess with him. The boss will be pleased. Zorn laughed, a harsh grating sound. I don't think so, old man. You've outlived your usefulness. He raised his plasma rifle, aiming it squarely at James's chest. Time seemed to slow as Zorn's finger tightened on the trigger. Patrick lunged forward, desperate to push his father out of the way, but he was too late. The plasma bolt caught James in the stomach, burning through flesh and bone. He crumpled to the ground, blood pooling beneath him. Patrick fell to his knees beside his father, pressing his hands against the wound. James coughed, flecks of blood spattering his lips. Patrick, 
I'm sorry, I'm so sorry for everything. With fading strength, he pressed a small data drive into Patrick's hand. Take this. It has everything you need to bring them down. Finish what I started. James Henderson, once a titan of industry, a man who had shaped the fate of worlds, breathed his last in his son's arms. Patrick bowed his head, tears streaking his cheeks. Patrick stood, his grief hardening into cold, implacable fury. He raised his plasma pistol, aiming it at Zorn's sneering face. No, I won't be joining him, but you will. With Laros at his side, her mind reaching out to sow confusion and fear among the mercenaries, Patrick opened fire, the air filled with the scream of plasma bolts and the stench of burning flesh as father and son fought side by side, united at last in their quest for justice. Zorn fell, a smoking hole in his chest and his mercenaries scattered, but Patrick knew this was only the beginning. With his father's dying words ringing in his ears, he turned to Laros, his eyes blazing with newfound purpose. We have to get this data to Zixus and the Resistance. The whole galaxy needs to know the truth. Laros nodded, her clawed hand gripping his shoulder. We will and we'll make them pay for what they've done to your father, to my people, to everyone. Together the human soldier and the Tak Tak princess strode from the blood-soaked room, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, for in that moment they were more than just unlikely allies. They were the last best hope for a war-torn galaxy, and they would not rest until justice was done. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Patrick and Laris charged across the war-torn landscape, a ragtag army of defected mercenaries and Tak Tak rebels at their backs. The towering spires of the Zephyr Corp headquarters loomed before them, bristling with gun emplacements and armoured troops. Patrick ducked behind a shattered wall, checking the charge on his rifle. Laros crouched beside him, her compound eyes narrowed in concentration as she reached out with her mind, sowing confusion and discord among the enemy ranks. She stood, her small frame seeming to grow as she focused her power. The nearest line of corporate troops faltered, their weapons lowering as they turned to face each other in bewilderment. Now, Laros cried, and the rebel forces surged forward, pouring through the gap in the defences. Patrick sprinted alongside Laros, his heart pounding as they raced towards the entrance. Suddenly a hulking figure stepped from the shadows, a cruel grin splitting his angular features. Zorn, Patrick spat, raising his rifle. The alien mercenary laughed, a grating metallic sound. You really thought it would be that easy, boy. Your father was a fool and so are you. With blinding speed, Zorn lunged forward, knocking the rifle from Patrick's hands. They crashed to the ground, grappling and trading blows. Patrick felt his ribs crack as Zorn's fist slammed into his side, but he gritted his teeth and fought on. Laros, meanwhile, was locked in a mental battle with the remaining corporate forces, her face contorted with effort as she turned their own minds against them. Soldiers screamed and clutched their heads, firing wildly at their comrades. Patrick's vision blurred as Zorn's fingers closed around his throat, squeezing with crushing force. He scrabbled at the alien's grip, black spots dancing before his eyes. With a last desperate surge of strength, Patrick brought his knee up into Zorn's groin. The mercenary howled in pain, his grip loosening for a crucial instant. Patrick wrenched free, snatching up a fallen plasma pistol and firing point-blank into Zorn's chest. The alien crumpled, his eyes wide with shock as he gasped his last breath. Patrick staggered to his feet, wiping blood from his eyes as he turned to Laros. The control room, he rasped. We have to get that evidence out. Laros nodded, her face pale but determined. Together they fought their way through the crumbling defences, rebels and mercenaries at their side. The control room doors loomed before them, heavily reinforced and guarded by a phalanx of elite troops. Patrick and Laros exchanged a glance, a wordless moment of understanding passing between them. As one they charged forward, plasma bolts and psionic blasts clearing the way. They burst into the control room, the data drive clutched tightly in Patrick's hand. But as they raced towards the central console, a klaxon began to blare, 
red lights flashing in warning. Self-destruct sequence initiated, a calm automated voice announced. Base destruction imminent. All personnel evacuate immediately. Patrick's blood ran cold. The corporation's failsafe, a last-ditch effort to bury their sins and destroy the evidence. He looked to Laros, torn between his duty and the lives of his friends and allies. The seconds ticked down, the weight of an impossible choice bearing down on him. Retrieve the evidence and risk everything, or save the lives of those he held dear and let the truth die with the base. Patrick's jaw clenched as he made his decision, the fate of worlds hanging in the balance. Patrick's heart raced as the automated voice blared, the base shaking with the first explosions. He turned to Laros, locking eyes with the brave Tak Tak princess. We have to get everyone out now. His voice was steady, masking the turmoil within. Laros nodded, compound eyes glinting with determination. I'll secure the evidence. You lead the evacuation. Patrick hesitated for a heartbeat, torn between his duty and his bond with Laros. But he knew she was right. The lives of the innocent had to come first. With that they parted ways, each racing against the clock. Patrick burst from the control room, shouting orders to the assembled rebels and defected mercs. Zixus, take your fighters and sweep the lower levels. Get every civilian out. The grizzled Tak Tak nodded, barking commands in his native tongue. The resistance fighters moved out, plasma rifles at the ready. Patrick turned to the human mercenaries, recognizing the woman with the cybernetic eye. Sasha, you and your team know this base inside and out. Guide us to the escape routes. Sasha grinned, hefting her rifle. With pleasure, let's move people. They charged through the crumbling corridors, the ground shuddering beneath their feet. Patrick's mind raced as he calculated the shortest paths, the quickest evacuations. Sasha and her mercs took point, their knowledge of the base's layout invaluable. They led the way to hidden hangar bays and maintenance tunnels, ushering frightened Tak Tak and Saurian workers to safety. Patrick's heart clenched as he saw the fear in their eyes, the desperation. These were the true victims of the corporation's greed, caught in the crossfire of a war they never wanted. He pushed on, his plasma rifle spitting bolts at any security drones that dared to impede their progress. The seconds ticked by, each one an eternity. Meanwhile, Laros navigated the labyrinthine depths of the base's data vaults, her mind reaching out to manipulate the security systems. Firewalls crumbled before her, encryption algorithms unraveled like threads. She worked frantically, clawed fingers flying over holographic interfaces. The evidence, the proof of the corporation's crimes, had to be secured. Sweat dripped from her brow, her mind straining with the effort. But she couldn't fail, not now, not when they were so close. At last, the final file transferred to her portable drive. Laros snatched it up, tucking it securely into her tunic. She turned to make her escape, the countdown echoing in her ears. That's everyone, Sasha confirmed, her face grim. But where's Laros? Patrick's blood ran cold. He keyed his comms, praying for a response. Laros, do you read me? The base is clear. We have to go. Static crackled in his ear, each second stretching into an eternity. Then a familiar trill laced with exhaustion and relief. The hangar shook, cracked spiderwebbing across the walls. The fail-safe reaching critical mass, they were out of time. Suddenly a small figure burst from a maintenance hatch, compound eyes wide with fear and triumph. Laros, clutching the data drive, raced across the hangar floor. Patrick reached out his hand clasping hers as he hauled her aboard the transport. The hatch sealed behind them, the engines roaring to life. They rocketed from the hangar, the base exploding behind them in a cataclysmic fireball. The shockwave buffeted the transport, nearly sending them spinning. In the aftermath of the battle, as the smoke cleared and the fires cooled, the true extent of the corporation's crimes came to light. Patrick and Laros presented the evidence to the intergalactic authorities, their testimony damning and irrefutable. The galaxy reeled with shock and anger, the revelations of corruption and warmongering shattering long-held truths. 
the Taktak and Saurians, faced with the manipulation they had endured, agreed to a tentative ceasefire. It was a small step, but a crucial one, a chance for peace, for understanding, for a future beyond the cycle of bloodshed and greed. Patrick and Laro stood side by side as the negotiations began, two unlikely allies united by a shared purpose. They had won a great victory, but they knew their work was far from over. The scars of the war ran deep, the wounds not easily healed, but they would face the challenges ahead, as they had faced every trial before. Together, a human soldier and a Tak-Tak princess, forging a new path through the stars. In the aftermath of the corporation's downfall, Patrick and Laros stood as beacons of hope in a galaxy ravaged by war. Their unwavering courage and determination to forge a path to peace inspired countless others across the stars. Tak Tak and Saurian alike looked to the unlikely pair as symbols of a new era, one where cooperation and understanding could heal the wounds of the past. Invitations poured in from across the galaxy, urging Patrick and Laros to share their story, to guide the fragile peace process. But not all welcomed this new dawn. There were those who clung to the old hatreds, who saw profit and power in the chaos of war. Patrick and Laros knew the risks as they embarked on their diplomatic mission, but they refused to let fear dictate their path. The stakes were too high, the dream of lasting peace too important. Zephyrus, once a battleground soaked in the blood of Taktak and Saurian alike, would serve as neutral ground for the peace summit. Patrick and Laros walked side by side towards the towering crystalline hall, a structure born from the combined efforts of both races. A glint of metal in the shadows, the whine of a plasma rifle charging. Chaos erupted as Taktak and Saurian extremists poured from hidden positions, united in their hatred of the peace process. Patrick rolled to his feet, his own rifle snapping up to return fire. Laros rose beside him, her compound eyes narrowing as she focused her mind, reaching out to sow confusion and discord among their attackers. But there were too many, their minds twisted by fanaticism and rage. A searing bolt sliced through the air, aimed squarely at Patrick's chest. Time seemed to slow as Laros lunged forward, throwing herself in the path of the deadly light. The bolt struck her small frame, sending her crashing to the ground in a smoking heap. Patrick's anguished cry tore through the din of battle as he cradled Laros's broken body, green blood staining his hands. Rage and grief surged through him, a fire that consumed all thought of self-preservation. He laid Laros gently down, his rifle snapping up as he charged the extremists, a lone human against a tide of hatred. Bolts sizzled past him, searing his flesh, but he felt no pain. His rifle bucked in his hands, each shot finding its mark with brutal precision. Tak Tak and Saurian fell before him, their blood mingling on the once pristine steps. At last, silence fell, broken only by the rasp of Patrick's breath and the hiss of cooling weapons. He staggered back to Laros, gathering her into his arms as he knelt amidst the carnage. I can't do it without you, Patrick choked out, tears cutting through the grime on his face. You showed me what courage really means. Laros reached up, her small clawed hand cupping his cheek. No, you showed me the strength of the human spirit, the compassion. That's what will change the galaxy. Her hand fell away, her eyes drifting closed. Promise me, she breathed, promise you won't let our dream die. Patrick bowed his head, his shoulders shaking with silent sobs. I promise, Laros, I'll never stop fighting for what we believe in for the future we wanted to build, together. He pressed a gentle kiss to her forehead, his tears falling onto her still face. Around them the shattered remnants of the peace summit lay strewn across the blood-stained ground, a testament to the hatred that still poisoned the galaxy. But even as grief threatened to crush him, Patrick felt a flicker of resolve kindling in his heart. Laros's sacrifice, her unwavering belief in a better tomorrow, would not be in vain. He would carry her memory, her dream, back to Earth. He would be the voice of hope, the ambassador of a future where all beings could live in harmony. No matter the opposition, no matter the cost, 
he would fight for the vision they had shared. For La Rosse, for the countless lives lost to the flames of war, for the chance to build a galaxy where understanding reigned over fear, where the bonds of friendship could span the stars themselves. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.